hoof print. They say either the Prince of Darkness or the Prince of Orange left this omega notched or etched in the hump of rock. A lucky horseshoe for the miners hiking to the cripple shaft to dig lead for the mineral lord and the lord of the soil to squabble over. Me? I think some joker carved it for a rake, chiselled it into Curry's Craig for poets and gullible souls, and now, like its folk reference, the incised graffito won't shift from its outcrop, despite the acid rain, despite erosion. Hatchet. It wasn't brain surgery or craftsmanship. The wood it cut was soft and mackerel scented. Old fish crates split along the grain for sticks to light the fire. Old bedroom furniture. The thing was blunt, but still a hatchet. In its own way, an instrument of local and familial piety. My granda had one like it. So did every hatchet-faced old fishwife and bookies runner on the avenue. The very word seems made to suit our accent and our urban folklore. What was buried back when my Aunt Jane married Buck Alec? When nostalgia goes armed, it carries a hatchet. Why all the riot gear for a nice weekend? The baby's bibs say proud to be a prod or born to walk the Garvaki road. When they set up a date for your punishment beating, what's the first thought goes through your head? If I was you, I'd be asking myself where a lad might buy one of those chocolate soldier flute band uniforms. They say you cope with stage fright by imagining your audience naked. But why not pass the time by casting a Shankle Road movie with Bruce Willis as Mad Dog Johnny Adair? And what's the right thing to wear? Shorts, I'd say. Or a t-shirt or vest with a logo or slogan. Does anyone know the Latin for simply the best? The War Effort The alderman melted the railings down for cannon, then, asked to erect a memorial to the dead, just gurned about wasting ratepayers' money, suggesting instead a fire appliance, the town's first, or a public park. Until a few of the men on the dole and a couple of boys, there are always corner boys in an escapade like this, scraped together a plinth of snow and a snow soldier sporting a tin hat, eyes of nutty slack and a wooden gun. The aldermen slapped these ne'er-do-wells in jail as vagrants, but were shamed into asking the price of artillery salvaged from scuttled submarines and of limestone and brass, not taking into account the foundry men, sculptors and masons who cost, because their work lasts longer than snow, an arm and a leg. Welcome to Dry City. It's a big 10-4 to the man with the famous handle and the puffy face, braving a wind that would cut you, the smell of the fish factory and the sandblasted foreshore at Clocky or Clocky, however they spell it. Two decades ago, there wasn't a pub for miles on this redneck coast. It's still a far cry from Fulham Broadway and the old crack about models and fizz in hotel jacuzzis. So, George, where did it all go wrong? A quick dash through the caravan park and another halfen for the famous blow-in with the weepy eyes. Let the telegraph snapper stalk the bleak car park where the bollards are red, white and blue, and the gannets squabble, breaker, breaker, over half a battered sausage and a gravy chip. He's no liver specialist, but even to him, the bad taste in his mouth, acid, fish and asses, is clear as Smirnoff, and the gut aches, pure homesickness, a geographical. 
which is how you might translate the word nostalgia. The slow nod to the landlords have yous no homes to go to. Money. Money, my landlady, counts the towels and keys. The pink blade of soap in her bathroom smells of old hospital. Money begrudges a second rasher at breakfast and serves me an itemised bill. Money takes it for granted I'm a pervert or thief. No visitors after nine and no girls in the room at all. I don't tell anyone where I live. I can't tell whether it's me who's ashamed of money or money of me. Mm -hmm.